to the Tamika Brown Show. Your ultimate guide to women's wellness, fashion, fitness, nutrition, relationships, career, and entrepreneurship. Let's dive in and empower your life with style, strength, and success. Welcome back to the Tamika Brown Show. We're going to dive into this whole menopause thing that I've been struggling with. I know you guys have probably seen some videos that I posted, and I promised that I was going to get you a video on nutrition and weightlifting. So this podcast is dedicated to nutrition. Now, I'm a firm believer of do what works for you. And and this is something that I incorporated into my lifestyle over the years. Backstory, I started going through menopause at the age of 40. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what was going on. The doctors weren't any help. They told me to just, you know, drink more water, get more rest, and really didn't particularly give me any insight on this whole menopause issue and I didn't have any older women to reference to then because my mother she had a hysterectomy I think in her 30s so I couldn't ask her you know what were her what was her signs or any symptoms that she had because she didn't have any so here I am at age 40 well there I was at age 40 actually losing my mind and didn't know why I was losing my mind gaining a lot of weight and just struggling day to day not sleeping hair thinning and I don't know if you guys know but studies show that premenopause can actually start at age 35 and women don't even know it and there are not a lot of tests that you can take to check your hormone levels you can take an FSH test you can ask your doctor to test you for that and that tests your hormone level but that's pretty much the only test you can do to see where you are in this menopause process uh, minus you know maybe some skip periods and like I said some hair loss weight gain but you really don't know what that is attributed to at that particular time. I visited a few gynecologists one in particular told me to try the natural way to relieve the symptoms with black cohosh, evening primrose and that didn't work for me. She also suggested hormone replacement therapy which I was a little hesitant to try first because number one, it's made in a lab and I didn't really know too much about it. And number two, it's made in a lab and I didn't really know too much about it. But after doing some research and discovering that it's estrogen, um, it's natural, it just boosts your estrogen level, I decided to give it a try. I'm using the Clamaro Pro patch. And once I started using that, guys, I'm telling you, the hot flashes were gone. Now, I don't know if that contributed to my weight loss i think me figuring out what worked for me kind of gave me a boost and i'll get into that in a minute but uh the hormone replacement therapy patch really helped with the hot flashes like i don't have any hot flashes anymore like none i want to say it helped with my mood my mood but i started doing uh, mindfulness and meditation so i'm not sure if that played a part in it as well however i can say for a fact that for me the hrt patch is working really well so if you guys want any more information leave me a comment and I can address any questions that you may have about that but yeah so let's get into this video on what to eat during menopause that will help you get through your symptoms of course everyone knows fruits and vegetables are a number one important try to stick with your leafy greens your spinach your kale Some people can digest raw vegetables well, some people can't. This is where I say find out what works best for you, but it's best to consume the fruits and vegetables as raw and as natural state as possible. If not, you can steam it. Just don't overcook it because you're going to overcook all of the nutrients and you're just going to like debunk or just kill all the effort you put into trying to eat right and eat healthy you're going to just throw away all the vitamins and minerals that are in the vegetables and in the fruit so you might as well just not even eat it at all if you're going to just broil it out with hot steam and water so try to eat it steamed or raw if possible
And I know some people are scared of fruits because of the possible carb connection or sugar. There's a lot of myths out there about fruit and sugar. But fruit is not white processed sugar. Fruit does contain fructose, which is a sugar a cousin, so to speak. So it is sugarish, but not a processed sugar. So the thing is, is to stay away from processed foods as much as possible. What I try to do when I go into the grocery store is I stick with the outer areas of the grocery store. If you notice, when you go in the grocery store, the outer perimeter, you have one side that's the fruit and vegetables. Uh, then you go towards the back, you have the fresh meat and seafood department. Then if you're leaning to the other side, you'll have like the breads, the bakery, which is still in, in uh, dairy. It's still not that great for me, but I try to stay out of those middle aisles that has had the uh, cookies the cakes the crackers the cereals i try to stay out of those aisles i do go in the cereal aisle because that's where the peanut butter and almond butter that i like is normally stored i don't know why and i guess it's related to cereal and the walden farm syrup so i do go in those aisles to purchase those products those those are my favorite products and I use almond butter if I do peanut butter it'll be sugar-free and my almond butter is sugar-free as well so I try to just stay uh, as processed less processed as possible one good thing you can do if you want to go through those middle aisles because I mean like you know it's your prerogative you don't I mean I'm just giving you advice but you can kind of tweak it to your level and, and, and your way of life so if you do go in those middle aisles make sure you read the back when you're reading the back the ingredients should have the least amount of things listed as possible if it's 50 things in the listed in the ingredients I wouldn't get it now you can get it but I wouldn't get it because the more things in that ingredients list the more processed that item is which means it's not going to digest in your body as well so just try to I mean, if you have to go in those aisles go ahead but just make sure you read the back the nutrition label i'm not even going to get anal with macros and all that that we'll save that for a later video maybe if you're interested but if you go in those aisles in the middle make sure it's not a lot of things listed in that ingredients list another hot item is oatmeal and brown rice again people are scared of these items some people not all because of the carb connection Everything in moderation is good, and everything, if you eat it unprocessed, is even better. So you want to stick with your brown rice, your quinoa, your oats. I like steel oats, but quick oats is fine. If you can't do steel oats, you don't have time, it's not your lifestyle. Quick oatmeal is just fine. It's what you put in these things that can turn it a wire. So make sure you get your quinoa and your oats your steel oats or your quick oatmeal in they're rich in fiber and they'll give you a lot of sustained energy throughout the day so a plus number one on my list is well not number one the fruits and vegetables are number one oatmeal probably number two because i think i do it like mm, twice a week or let's just say one of the things that i like to do is when we meal prep i would cook a whole bunch of like chicken tenders and the chicken tenders are like chicken breasts but they're cut in pieces so they're not as to me they're not as dry because I really don't like chicken breasts it can be kind of dry but I'll cook, cook chicken tenders for the week I would sear some salmon for the week or a few days not the week and some, my husband likes shrimp so I'll do shrimp and then we'll have that for the week and then we'll you know eat off of that during the week weigh it out add it to our lunch and dinner it's kind of easier to make sure you're not eating processed foods if you have it already cooked you don't necessarily have to have it in those meal prep containers that's like you see everybody doing all the like buff bodybuilder people which is cool i've done that it's time consuming it's space consuming but you don't have to be that particular you can just cook it put it in one pot up uh, container 
put it in your fridge and just eat off of it, pack your meals during the day. Another thing I also do is, and this is me, because my husband doesn't like cold boiled eggs, but at the grocery store, they'll have bags of eggs already boiled and already like sealed in a bag. You just pick it up and you can eat off that during the day, sometimes when I'm hungry. And most of the time when you're hungry, you can pretty much contribute that to your protein as well. So if I feel like I'm hungry, I'll drink something, water, and I have flavored water sometimes. I can drink flavored water better than plain water. I like these calorie drinks, sweeteners that you can add to your water, but I'll drink water and I'll eat a boiled egg and I will be full as heck for about 20 to 30 minutes. So if you like eggs, worry about it, grab it, grab one, he is, we don't really have time to be in the kitchen, at least me. We don't have time to be in the kitchen or don't want to be in the kitchen me every day you want to just grab it and go so these are good ways to grab it and go your eggs are already boiled i mean and if you have time you can actually boil eggs during the in the beginning of the week for the week you can also do that instead of grabbing the bag that's already boiled me i just go in the store and grab the ones that's already boiled so i don't have to think about remembering to boil eggs Another thing that's important for women going through men menopause is the loss of bone density. Uh, one way to combat that, of course, is calcium-rich foods, foods rich in calcium. And people don't know that leafy greens are actually a high calcium food. So your kale, your romaine lettuce, your chard, those things are high in calcium you can consume that to increase your calcium as well if you're not a milk person like myself um, or you can drink plant milk you can drink avocado milk or oat milk anything to boost your calcium and other calcium rich foods some cheeses cheese doesn't do well with me so i kind of gotta eat it in moderation but some cheese maybe the natural cheese goat cheese not the processed American cheese because I don't, that's not really cheese. It's just pasteurized milk sliced up. But so that's one way. Those are some ways you can boost your calcium, which will help you and hopefully decrease bone density that's lost during menopause. Now, I am a hummus chickpea fanatic. Like, I can eat hummus every day. I don't know. It's just really good. And I can eat chickpeas every day. I can eat chickpeas raw, I can eat chickpeas cooked in a meal. I just love chickpeas and hummus. And if you guys didn't know, hummus is made from chickpeas. That's why I said I can eat chickpeas and hummus because they're kind of the same thing. But um, so that's your phytoestrogen. That and soy, um, these are things that will alleviate your symptoms. The bloating, the cramps, the moodiness. Um, chia seeds is also good. For your phytoestrogens and flax seeds. Now chia seeds are really, really, really good. You can make a bomb pudding recipe with chia seeds. So you take the chia seeds, you soak it overnight uh, in the almond milk or whatever milk you choose, and when you wake up the next morning, it's like pudding. It's called chia pudding, see? It's really good. You might want to try it. Now I know I talked about what to avoid as far as the foods in the grocery store and staying on those outer walls outer aisle but you also want to avoid sugary drinks and sweetened beverages to stay away from sodas like don't even do anymore no sodas i wouldn't even do the fruit juices me personally but like i said everyone is different everyone body reacts different so you have to do what works best for you but i do know that soda real soda not diet soda you should definitely take that out of your diet like completely coffee didn't really affect me in a negative way it didn't it doesn't trigger any hot flashes um it doesn't disrupt my sleep but it could be also that i take a caffeine pill before i work out 
so I could be kind of caffeine resistant, so to speak. But like, just be mindful of coffee and how much you consume. I am aware of women who drink coffee all day. I mean, cup after cup after cup after cup. And I would suggest that, but like I said, do what works for your body. If you're not negatively affected by all of that caffeine, then keep consuming it, but watch what you put in it, like the sugar, the processed sugar, or whole milk. And just watch things like that, but it shouldn't be a problem to still have a life, to still enjoy things that you like. Now, babies, alcohol. And I love alcohol, but you have to do it in moderation. Would I say that decreasing alcohol helps with your symptoms? I'm going to say yes. It helps me. And it also depends on what alcohol you drink. Like what particular wine. Are you drinking a sweet wine? Or are you drinking a dry white wine? Because your, your sweet red wines tend to have more sugar. And if you're drinking spirits, what are you mixing your spirits with? Are you mixing it with soda? Are you mixing it with these high sugary mixers that are often mixed with them? That could definitely trigger hot flashes. So, so just be mindful, consume alcohol in moderation. I'm not like the alcohol monster or, you know, I'm not the person who bashes alcohol because I do still consume alcohol. I just tend to, I don't drink a lot of wine, only maybe socially, but when I do drink spirits, I'm very careful of what I mix it with. I'll mix it with cup soda. If I'm out hanging out, I'll do cup soda and vodka or cup soda and tequila, or I'll get a dirty martini, but most places don't have olive brine, so I have to generally stick with the cup soda and vodka or tequila, or I just take shots. Every now and then you'll find a place that has like sugar-free Red Bull. I sometimes use that. That's an oxymoron because alcohol is like a, a depressant and then the energy drink is like a, um, you know, it gives you energy. So the two of them together, woo. So I haven't done that in a while. But, and then I, or I'll even do a diet soda and mix with rum, something like that. Because you still got to live, people. I'm not here to tell you don't live um, th during this menopause phase. I want you to go through it. And I want you to still have a nice life and be happy while you're going through it. And I can't express enough that water. I mean, if you want to drink, if you want to drink something, you know, and I know you got your coffee and your alcohol and your diet sodas, but at the end of the day, you should drink water. Stay hydrated as much as possible. Possibly even put some electrolytes in your water, like a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. That usually keeps you, especially during the hotter months, it'll keep you more refreshed. Or if you're like me and you're like, oh, I'm sick of water, you can put like a zero calorie sweetener in your water, like a Mio. Just make sure it's zero calories, especially if you're fasting. Um, but you can mix that in with your water or you can just drink plain water. You can put lemon. Some people put lemons, cucumbers, like let it uh, settle into the water and they'll drink that. Apple, I do put apple cider vinegar in my water sometimes, but not a lot. I don't really like the taste too much, but sometimes I'll pour it in there just to give me an extra boost. But you definitely need to stay hydrated. So it's suggested that you drink at least three liters of water a day. And I know that's a lot. It's a lot. Or you can just go by the daily standard of eight cups of water a day, which is an ounce uh, a couple is eight ounces so if you drink eight cups of eight that's 64 ounces of water a day which isn't a lot because i try to drink a hundred ounces of water a day but that should be pretty easy and they also have these like really good gadgets and apps nowadays that you can download onto your phone like water reminders it'll be like take a girl like you can set it to tilt, remind you every two hours. Lean protein and three. And yes, I touched on supplements earlier, but supplements are a really good thing. Like you need your calcium. So if you're not getting your calcium from your food, your food, I would suggest 
purchasing a calcium supplement. I don't particularly support or promote anyone in particular, any brand of calcium in particular. There are a lot out there. You just have to do your research and just make sure that it's a natural um, substance and there's not any byproducts in there. Now, vitamin D, everyone just about is low on vitamin D. And I dare say that every, almost every black person is deficient in vitamin D. I don't know if it has anything to do with them taking us from the motherland and bringing us here and we're not getting the sun that we used to get from our homeland. And that's how we're very, very deficient in it. But black people tend to be the highest race, the race with the highest amount of people with low vitamin D. Now, what I do is I have a vitamin D that I take every week, a prescribed uh, dosage. I think it's 10,000 something, something a week. My doctor prescribed it because he was like, your vitamin D is so low that you're probably about to die. But not so much like that. You, you know what I'm saying. It was pretty low. But so mine's every week, uh, 10,000 milligrams a week. Now, omega-3s are very important as well as your probiotics. I'm actually, I did some research this week on a probiotic called Renew Life. And I hate giving out names because, you know, I'm like promoting a product, but I'm not getting anything from it, which is fine. But um, I'm going to try this Renew Life probiotic, and I guess I'll keep you guys posted. I do take probiotics now. I can't remember the name. It's off Amazon. I just make sure it's like 90 billion, uh, the things, the 90 billion um, probiotics in it. I just take like a really high dosage and make sure I take that every day and implement that into my other supplements as well. I do take dandelion root, which is a natural diuretic. So if you guys are experiencing bloating, but that's very good to take. Instead of taking um, Diorex, you can take dandelion root. That's a natural supplement to help ease with bloating, the bloating feeling after you eat or the bloating feeling when you wake up, which is when I tend to have it the most. And, oh, and also I use the Vital Collagen Protein. It's the best product to use. Like if you need, if you're trying to get your protein in, you're short on protein one day, and you're like, oh, my protein is so low. I need to get something really quick, but it's like 6 o'clock at night. This is me talking because I go to sleep early, so it's late at night. I didn't get all my protein in. Ah, what am I going to do? So I grabbed the Chobani yogurt with uh, no sugar. I'll grab a scoop of my vital collagen protein because it has collagen in it too, which is good for our hair, nail, hair, nail, and skin. And I'll throw that into the yogurt. I do put like a half a teaspoon of no sugar Hershey dark chocolate powder in the container, and I'll mix it up, y'all. It's like chocolate pudding, and I'm like a chocolate junkie, so it's win-win for me I get my chocolate fix and I get my dose of protein because the yogurt is 12 grams of protein and the collagen is 18 grams of protein well there you have it you have like 30 grams of protein right there in one little cup of yogurt and it's not you won't feel like really full or you know because it's in the evenings for me so it's something that I can eat and still go to bed a couple hours later and don't feel like oh I just went to the buffet and I can't go to sleep or lay down or anything. So that's another good recipe to do. Another good Tamika recipe tip is the collagen protein powder. Or you can use whey protein powder. Sometimes I do put whey protein powder in there. But I just, I've been using this vital collagen protein lately just because, you know, like I said, the collagen is good for your hair, nails, and skin. And that's good for us menopause ladies because that's one of the first things, you know, that we notice is our hair is getting thin, our skin maybe is, you know, um, drier than normal or oilier than normal, our nails are getting brittle. So I tend to like the vital collagen protein better just for that aspect. 
So that's it. By making these dietary changes, you can better manage menopause symptoms and support your overall well-being. Thanks for tuning in to my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a review. Until next time, take care, ladies, and stay healthy.